Hello, and welcome to a special Vox on Warhammer 40K's Grim History from the Beyond. I'm Zekthar. And I'm Muxin. And today we'll be discussing something unusual. That's right, Zekthar. Today we'll be discussing something that has been floating around the internet, and especially YouTube, for the past week or so. Games Workshop's release of the Codex of Adeptus Custodes. Indeed. But more precisely, the aspect that there will now be female custodians. <clears throat> now, on our last premiere, notable White Scar characters, the subject was brought up and many questions and concerns were voiced. So we figured we would discuss it a little at length today. Now, ironically, most of the YouTube videos I've seen on this particular subject have not been done by chroniclers, but by people that normally voice their opinions about other things, mainly politics and media. One such person happened to be a YouTuber both Yuxin and I enjoy, and that would be The Critical Drinker. And while his video was interesting, he made a common mistake that I figured we should clear up. He mentioned the Adeptus Custodes as supersized space marines, which isn't quite accurate. So to start out today, we figured we would start on who the Custodes are, and how they differ from space marines. Indeed. But after that, we will discuss shenanigans and our thoughts on the new lore. Quite right, brother. But before we start, I figured we should hear from the man himself on what the custodies mean to him. The Emperor. <clears throat> These men are my bodyguards, their lives forfeit, to the guarantee of my physical safety. Of the loyalty to me, there shall be no question nor doubt. I, and I alone shall have authority to stand in judgment over them. No other commander shall they have in battle, nor in service. None shall bar them from me, and none shall hamper or stall the mission. So it is decreed. Well, that sums it up pretty nicely. The Deptus Custodes, known as the Legio Custodes, during the era of the Great Crusade and Horse Heresy, and commonly known as the Ten Thousand is the Imperial Adepta responsible for protecting the Imperial Palace and the physical body of the Emperor of Mankind, as well as serving as his most important emissaries, his companions, and the keepers of his many secrets. The Custodes is an elite cadre of genetically engineered transhuman warriors who are even more potent in combat than the Adeptus Astartes. They are to the Space Marines as the Emperor is to the, who is Primarchs. And it is rumored that each was created by the Master of Mankind personally. His might permeates them, burns in their eyes, and flows through their veins as surely as their blood. As such, the Adeptus Custodes are widely regarded as the deadliest warriors in the galaxy, human or otherwise where the Space Marines represent the mass-produced, genetically engineered soldiers of the Imperium of Man, the Adeptus Custodes are a force of individual warriors, each a bastion in their own right, and a sentinel of unmatched capability and singular purpose created to counter any possible threat, human, alien, or demonic. These warriors have stood in the presence of the immortal Emperor of Mankind since before the time of the Unification War. For 10,000 Terran years and more, the custodians have stood watch over their lord and master, serving as the emperor's personal heralds and praetorian bodyguard. Now, the custodes have been around for quite some time, longer than even the space brains. They were even with the emperor during the Unification Wars and are still around in the 42nd millennium. Yet, the question you may ask is, how do they differ from the Space Marines? Well, both are subject to extensive psychological and cognitive conditioning and are physically and mentally reworked to render most of their baser drives inert and their beings rechanneled towards aggression, goal acquisition, and the fulfillment of duty. As a further safeguard against distraction and as biological control, both are, of course, incapable of procreation. In both cases, all that is left are beings of singular purpose. In the case of each Astartes, what is created is a living engine of conquest that cares for little else. 
and the custodian guard each is created protector of unrelenting diligence and savage capability. A watchman whose vigilance will never tire. What also differs truly between the two is not just their functional purpose, but the extent of their augmentation and the means by which it is accomplished. While the process through which the Deptus Astartes are fabricated from a human being is well enough documented in its outline, which we covered in our Vox, Becoming a Space Wolf, genuine facts about the manner in which the custodian guard are created are very few, even within the hands of the Imperium's hierarchy. This is because, as with all else about the custodian guard, it is a matter for the Imperial household alone and that authority is one none may gainsay or question. What is known, however, marks them as different. Firstly, there is the matter of the age of the candidacy. For a child to become one of the adeptus custodes, it is known that they must begin the process in their late infancy and certainly before adolescence, as taken hold on their physical structure. This stands in stark contrast to the space brains whose implantation with the gene seed is only possible after the onset of male adolescence and best served before the candidates reach his full physical maturity. It is known that all custodians begin their lives as the infant sons of the noble houses of Terra. It is a mark of incredible prestige to surrender one's child to this most glorious of callings within the Imperium and many notable clans amongst Terran aristocracy have willingly give up almost entire generations of newborn sons to earn it. Such children are taken in when they are still in infancy, for the earlier the genetic metamorphosis into a warrior of the Deptus Custodes begins, the better a chance it has of success. Huge crowds line the avenue of sacrifice outside the censor's gate when such an intake occurs. They fill the air with frenzied cheering and prayer as the great and good of Terra's high society prayed before them, soaking in the adoration of the masses, even as they surrender their progeny forever into the emperor's care. This may link to a second of the few known facts about the creation of the Deptus Custodes, that the gene craft and alchemistry that transforms them is as absolute as it is subtle, and worked upon the smallest conceivable microscopic level of their genome and cellular structure. It is a process that affects such change on the mortal human form that, when complete, unless they serve such massive bodily harm as to forcibly end their lives, they're effectively immortal, without perceptible aging taking place after full maturity. Not then for the Adeptus Custodes, the pattern of surgical grafting and organ implantation that creates a space ring. No such crudities of augmentation at all mar the Custodian. What creates them is as invisible as it is potent. Worked upon the core genetics and at the deep cellular level, and perhaps tailored to each specific inductee, there are those who insist that so invisible and yet so powerful is the process that it crosses over into a metaphysical realm of biomancy and psychic manipulation on a level unguessed at given that it is said that the emperor himself has overseen the creation of every custodian guard who has ever lived, this may well be true. The peerless warriors who then result from this arcane process are a rare breed indeed, and not to be squandered recklessly on the battlefield. They were created with a single purpose in mind, to be the emperor's own elite guard. They were a force created both to defend the Emperor from physical harm whenever the Great Crusade might take him, to stand watch over his private domains and most guarded secrets, and to serve as the direct agents of his will, as his personal emissaries. Be that will to protect, to venture, to claim, to keep secret, or to execute without remorse. Each custodian is further blessed with protections that leave them resistant to the powers of both the Psyker and the Null, making them perfectly suited to fight 
alongside the Sisters of Silence. Additionally, they never exhibit psychic powers of their own, as though battlefield psychers are undoubtedly powerful living weapons, they're also incredibly unstable ones. Their minds are prone to invasion by war entities, and this is a danger no custodian will ever face. It appears the Emperor wished for no chink in the defenses of his bodyguards, thus granting them no gift of psychic ability. Well, folks, that's the quick cut and dry synopsis on how custodies are made. Well, I understand that there isn't a lot to go on there, but that's all we got. They are a fairly secretive organization, after all. Now for the moment you all have been waiting for, the shenanigans. Now, on April 13th, excerpts of the 10th Codex for the Adeptus Astartes were released with an interesting caveat, female Adeptus Custodes. Naturally, people found this strange and asked Games Workshop on X, formerly known as Twitter, why? The company responded with, <clears throat> Since the first of the 10,000 were created, there has always been female custodians. This is where the trouble started, in my opinion, because it's simply not true. Since they have been around as miniatures and even before that, the custodes have always been men. Customers of Games Workshop didn't like this. And since then, a whirlwind of events have taken place. Since April 12th, stock prices have dropped from 130 a share to 118 a share. People have begun to boycott the company, and in the midst of this, Games Workshop's chief financial officer, Rachel Tung, has roughly sold $875,000 worth of stock, nearly two-thirds of the stock she had. Now, this sale comes months after it was revealed in the company's half-year report that she had resigned from the company. Games Workshop CEO Kevin Roundtree shared in the company's 2023-24 half-yearly report in January, saying, <clears throat> Also, after 27 years with the group and nine years on the board, Rachel Tung has informed the board that she does not propose to offer herself for re-election as Chief Financial Officer at the next AGM in September 2024. Rachel will continue in her role, working as an integral part of my team to ensure smooth transfer of responsibilities to her successor. Rachel is amazing and she will be missed enormously. Roundtree also added, Rachel will step down from the board at the 2024 AGM and will leave the group in January 2025. We will be commencing a search for her successor immediately. Now, most people I've personally talked to say they honestly really don't care that there are now female custodes. The outrage and concern really falls into two categories. One, straight up lying about it instead of simply stating they're retconning the army. And two, what this entails for the franchise moving forward. Now we come to the part of the Vox that you guys are probably most interested in. Our thoughts. Well, Yuxin, what are you thinking? Well, when it comes to the uproar it's Self, just taking it from that aspect, how it's blown up as much as it has. Mm -hmm. um, well, like I mentioned before, I've seen posts and and YouTube videos from people that don't even play Warhammer. They have no idea anyways really what it's about. Yeah, that's because well, like one of the things is this particular time and age that this, it's happening Mm -hmm. um, more and more of this sort of stuff has been occurring and more and more people have taken notice of it and don't like it in general. And so they see it no matter what facet it's from, they may not be interested in that facet, but they see it there and they're just like, Oh no, it's happening again. We got to flag this thing. So people notice. Yes, I, be I believe there is a term for this that most people call uh woke culture, correct? Yeah. And I think, anyways, that, that falls under the category of what I said, anyways, what entails for the franchise moving forward. Now, right. you were there, I think, for the conversation that we had on our premiere, and I think just about everybody that that was part of that conversation really doesn't have a problem with female custodies. Well, they, they did feel there was an issue with them changing it. Yeah. But not like, not like, you know, how dare they? I'm <laughs> taking my toys and leaving. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was more of the way that it was dropped. It was dropped saying, yeah. oh, well, this has always been the case. What are you talking about? And 
anybody who can you know read or or use the internet and go back in time and look at it no this is not always the way that it's been it's always been very much like the space marines it's always been men that are put into the situation and i we've talked about it before and i think you agree with me on this yuxin if they had instead of trying to i believe the term is gaslighting or a better term is just straight up lying about it right <laughs> if they had gone a different route like we want to be more inclusive to women or or something along those lines. I don't think people would have had nearly as much of a problem with it. I, I still think it would have raised quite a few eyebrows, though, because, you know, oh, yeah. they do have uh, the Sisters of Silence and the um, Sisters of Battle. And... <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, you've got, like, for instance, the Eldari and the Drukhari, both of which anyways have very prominent female characters. And I mean, pretty much even the Necrons, the Necrons have female prominent characters too. Really? So, what's that? Oh yeah, they did have that one. Uh, that was a. Well, in the last book that we read, which was what was it? it was uh, uh, the Infinite and the Divine? Yeah, the person that the Overseer, like mentor, was one. Well, there was there was a couple of them of her call right. There was the Overseer, and then there was also an Executioner, both of which, anyways, were female. Well, there's also the person that he ends up taking the head of because the rest of her body is basically destroyed. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one that uh, uh, Oricon talks to him. It's like, yeah, it's like his mentor or something like that. And it turns out that it's actually channeling Catan. But I mean, <laughs> the point is, is that there's women there. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's women that are actually throughout pretty much the only races, the only race I can think of, anyways, that. Okay, there's two. There's only two races I can think of anyways that their women aren't predominantly in, and that is the orcs, which the orcs are a fungus. So <laughs> take you that. Say they're they're um they're asexual. They're non binary. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then uh the leagues of Votan, which are clones. Yeah. Oh, so, there's another one. What Tyranids. Ah uh, no, Tyranids, they actually have there, there are known anyway. There, there's species that they, they, they call like, for instance, mother. I don't know okay. if that necessarily means anyway. It's not that they're they're reproducing. It's it's they've given them a female aspect, which I mean, to whereas the, when the it comes to orcs book. and the Votan, generally they refer to most of the characters as he, or all the characters basically as he. Right, and it doesn't. Well, especially with the orcs, anyways, it doesn't. They're really not a he; they're a fungus. Yeah, they're a large green fungus. Angry mushrooms. Yes, angry mushrooms is the best way of describing them. But getting back to what we're talking about, I think the thing, anyways, that a lot of people have a concern about is, is that this is one step towards something that oh, I think a lot of people don't want, which is female space marines, right? Well, that, that and doing exactly what's happened in so many other mediums. Right, like uh, Star Wars or Marvel, um, mainly Disney. <laughs> in fact, a lot of people that play Warhammer 40K that are having an issue with this were like, we we started getting into Warhammer 40K because we left the Star Wars franchise. Right. And then they end up coming to this, and they're just like, we're so engrossed in this. We love the lore and stuff. And then all of a sudden, oh, no, it basically followed us here. Right. <laughs> so they're the problem. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, so, and, and the way they've dropped it, by the way, this isn't the first time Games Workshop has done this. Uh, they did this uh, it was a few years back with the Rogel Dorn tank. People are just like, well, where did this tank come from? And they're like, well, it's always been there. And everybody went, no, we have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, except for they didn't send out a conflicting information either. They just said, oh, yeah, it's always been there. It's like, okay, it's a tank. Right. Here. Well, yeah, and, and there was and there wasn't anyways beforehand anyways. There, was, there wasn't a different type of tank they called the Rogel Dorn. And it wasn't like they went, well, there's only been Lehman Russes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's always been Rogel Dorns. No, 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 it's always been the Lehman Russ, but... Which is a different type of tank. But, yeah, so, I mean, they they have dropped something like this before and just said, well, it's always been there. 
the largest problem. retcon that I think they have done was with the Necrons. And the reason why a lot of people let them get away with that is because the original story plot was basically they're enslaved to metal King. killers. That's yep. what they are. They literally just took the Tomb Kings from Warhammer Fantasy and shrunk them into Warhammer 40K. Oh, not even that much detail. It was just these things were were betrayed by the Catan, and now they are run by the Catan, and their whole aspect is to kill everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like okay, we retcon that entire thing. It's like okay, but see, now you have a storyline that we can actually go off of. It's not well, like what about the this squats? where it's like, huh? What about the squats? That was a huge retcon. They wanted no, to bring the them back, so they, they them randomly back the, killed off the League of Votan. I know, but that's debatable. <laughs> because technically, technically, uh -huh. they're a different race because they still have mentionables of different types of squats. Right, but, but everybody they just everybody. were like, <laughs> you, everybody. everybody who knows what the squats are, understand what the, the votes on are. They're yeah. trying to overwrite the squats. We understand this, but they still have right. the squats in their lore. They gave it a loophole. On top of the League of Otani, right. personally, I like the squad's background better, but, you know, that's me. <laughs> uh, instead of going, well, they say. Right. But we won't right. actually tell you. <laughs> but getting back on track, like I was saying about the whole Rogel Dorn tank, the huge difference, though, is, is that they've, they, they said, well, it's always been here. Okay. Well, they said the same thing anyways about female custodians. The difference was is that, no, it's been it's been documented that no, they had it the other way around. Not only that, but the, there have been many times, anyways, where somebody wanted to come out with the female custodians, and upper management straight up just said, "No, we're not doing that." And one of the main reasons why for that, by the way, if you were wondering, has to do with uh, making the models. They just didn't want to make another form of model; it would be too expensive. But, but at the time, I believe they would. The way that they put it was. Well, we had this male mini line and we aren't coming out with new, which by the way, as far as all information that we've been able to find, they still aren't coming out with any female custode models, which is another yeah. reason why another flare has been set up concerning that too. Right. Because so, they're going, okay, who are they really trying to please in this case? Right. And, and that really boils down to the question anyways, is like what... Why is the franchise doing this? Why is Games Workshop doing this? Well, we've we we have been doing our due diligence and, and reading and looking some things up, and a couple of things that we found, anyways. The, the two big things was their stockholders. They they have new stockholders. I can't remember what was the what's the group called? It's called Black. There are two main Black stockholders Rock. that throw throw up flags. One of them's BlackRock. The other one is Vanguard Group. Right. And they are very uh, proactive in woke culture. Right. So the concept is that they invest in things and they expect things to change within companies so that they become more woke. The other thing, though, that we found that would, to me anyway seems to make a whole lot more sense is the whole thing with Henry Cavill's Games Workshop Amazon project that's coming out. Right. Now... From what I've read, anyways, none of this part, anyways, from my, what I've read, is is actually been confirmed. Right. Every place that I have read and I have I've listened to, every single one of them, anyway, says that this is more of a rumor than anything else. But it it's a rumor that makes sense. That's that's yeah. the the concerning part, and it's it's the concept that Amazon, anyways, wants to make it's ESG down. Yeah, it wants to it wants to streamline Games Workshop, or or the it wants to streamline Warhammer 40k, and we've seen that happen before with Amazon. We 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 watched it anyway in the War of the Rings. Dear God, no, 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 it's not War of the Rings. It's the Rings of Power. Sorry, my bad, my bad. And War of the Rings was actually a game, which is right. actually a decent game. <laughs> but the Rings of Power and. I know people are bringing this up and they're like, well, the Far Cry one, uh, they're, they're doing the same thing with the Far Cry one. I wouldn't put Far Cry in this just simply because I watched Far Cry and it's not half bad. <laughs> I mean, 
if if your concept is straight up that anything is going to be woke if it's got a female lead in it, then where if her case already woke, so you can just pick up things and leave. Like I was going to say, if 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 your concept is a strong female lead is woke, then like my brother just said, Warhammer 40K has already got that. That's that's not the issue here. It's the concept of how it's portrayed. It's the aspect that she is a strong character because she's a woman. That, to me, anyways, I have a problem with, mainly because it eliminates all character development and the concept of what makes this person strong. If it's just simply because of her sex, that's a problem. That doesn't make any sense. It, it, it's the way... Say? On how it's done. I mean, like, okay, yeah. so I, like I said before, anyways, Far Cry. The thing I like about Far Cry is is that the the main female heroine, she has no idea how the surface works. So she's kind of literally bumbling around for most of the, the first parts of the episode. She's making terrible decisions. She is, I mean, and, and, and that's the thing, anyways, that most heroes go through. You know, they, they start out small and then they, you know, progressively get better, right? Right. So this is something, uh, by the way, if you look up, a lot of YouTubers have done this where they do a comparison between, okay, what is a strong character versus a Mary Sue or a powerful female role? Right. And, 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 and guess what? You, you, can, you can have all these different characters anyways and still make them work. I mean, the hardest one that I've always found anyways to make work is just the what what is dubbed today anyways is the strong female character. Yeah. Because that's what I'm talking about. And, and I'm not saying that that's a, a strong female character is a problem because a lot of a lot of great characters throughout media have been strong capable women. I mean, a good example of that would be I mean, uh Sarah Connor from Terminator. Right. And uh, it, it's 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 the way that it's projected today, as opposed to what it has been in the past. It has always been in the past, anyways. That this person is capable. This person is person strong. Is capable. They're strong. They do have. This is one thing that a lot of newer characters are failing at is they have a flaw. Well, not just a flaw. Growth. I mean, growth is the more important thing. I mean, we can go back to Fallout and. Like I said before, this, this woman is kind of bumbling around. She has no idea what she's doing. But as the episodes progress, she starts to learn. She starts to get better at what she does and becomes a better hero, a more capable heroine. And and therefore, anyways, you you tend to root for her. You know, a lot of characters don't have in this nowadays that are considered strong female characters. Or, or they simply, anyways, degenerate everybody else around them to make them look stronger. That's right. the other big problem that I have. But and that is kind of a concern for me anyways with these female custodes. Because if you're going to be talking about a, a custodes or custodes, I've never really personally liked the custodes because they're they're a MacGuffin. They're they're big beefy characters that just just mob through everything. I mean Except the reason for when the writer doesn't want them to. Uh, well, I mean, the, the oh, reason right. why the reason why they work in the tabletop game is because their points are so expensive. You've got, like, for instance, if they're going to be attacking an orc army, and you're doing it with, I don't know, 5,000 points, or I don't know if that's small or big. But here's the difference is, is that you would have, like, four custodes on one side, and then you would have, like, a multitude of orcs on the other. Right. That's how they balance it out. And... And that's the way that it's designed. So if you're going to... And, In theory, anyways. Yeah. And if you're going to talk about female custodes, if, if they've got all the same stats, I like I said, I really don't care. I don't really have a dog in this fight on and this one. I don't know why anybody would care about making them female in that case either. So it's... To me, my and, concern is, is that if they bring it forward into like a media standpoint. Yeah. Well, first off, I, I don't want I don't want to see a show that that has the custodes in it as main characters. I just don't. I mean, if they're like a background character, like for instance, if they did the Horus Heresy, like the you know, all of the books, pretty yeah. much all the books. 
I mean, if, if they're doing like the Horus Heresy and the Emperor strides out there and he's got some Sisters of Silence on one side and some Custodes on the other, that's fine. I mean, I really don't care. But if it's all of a sudden we're going to do a show about a female Custodes, that I just simply because of the look we just talked about anyways, the trappings of Hollywood right now. I just don't want to see that. It's just because you are literally taking <laughs> the strongest person. And then you're going to inject with them all the problems that we just described anyways with the strong female character in movies and the way that they are portrayed today. And you're putting that at Jedi level. Yeah. To me anyways. That's Which, as you know, we've seen a strong female Jedi character. Yeah, and that went over so well. I... <laughs> Nothing against the actor. It was the role. That they played. It was also written terribly. I mean, we, we could talk about Star Wars for a while. That, that's what I mean. It was the role that they had to play. So, in conclusion, I guess, uh, what do you think, Yuxin? What, what do you think about this retcon? Well, there's two things I think. One is, is that it wasn't necessary. Right. So, I don't know why they even... Well, I do kind of know why they did it. Okay, so real oh. quick though, real quick, if if they had done this retcon and someone asked them and they said, "Well, why why do we have female custodies now?" and their response wasn't, "Well, they've always been there." I think honestly, that's really what rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Yeah. But like, if they um, if they just straight up said it, it was like, "Look, we want more women to play games workshop games." We want to include them and we thought this was instead of making it Space Marines, female space marines which we knew everybody was going to have a problem with why don't we use the custodes instead if they'd said that i think a lot of people wouldn't have a problem with it at all right because that makes um, sense <laughs> plus the others another aspect that a lot of people had brought forth is like you know saying that they were there from the very beginning they could have changed it differently to say they could have been like for example after the horse heresy where almost all of them got wiped out yeah, ninety percent. So they're of them just trying are, to get as yeah. many people as they could to build up their force back up. Or, or, uh, it could, or it could even be they could even put it into just the forty-first millennium, or right. forty-second that we're in now. With, with, with uh, just MacGuffin going, known as Call. <laughs> or, or, or Rabute Gilman's like our stocks are so low with custodies because they keep dying because we're in the Adominus Crusade right now. We need to get we need to stockpile more of these guys, and they're like, well. You know, we could always, you know, give this up to the other 50% of the human population. Okay, let's do that. I mean, like I said, they could they could have done like a boatload of different things different. And they just, it, it's almost like it was lazy. <laughs> oh, you mean kind of like how they did the Leagues of Votan? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> like Leagues we need to come out with the Space Dwarfs. Well, we do have this information on the, um, the squats. Ah, uh, get rid of that. We'll do something else. Really? Yeah. How much? Um, or my personal let's see what favorite. We can think of in a week. <laughs> my personal favorite was when we were doing. When we have done some voxes actually on the leagues of Oton. You're more than welcome to check them out. But the uh, the weaponry, and it was like everything that shot was literally an imperial weapon, but it had the it's caveat that better. it was designed by the Voton, so therefore superior. What? Yeah. <laughs> Could come out with their own weapons? I mean, the only one that, if I recall right, they did was the, what was it, Black Star Axes or something like that? Well, that, and then they had the mole launcher and the... <laughs> the problem with the mole launcher is that there is also a mole grenade launcher in the Imperium. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we just found some lore anyways on how it was invented by the Voton, which was far more entertaining. But... Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, if, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So they could have what, done what other thought? ways other than just completely blasting off saying, yeah, they've always been there. What are you talking about? But I think the thing that pops out the most, and this is why there's so many, so much more focus on it, is because of when these changes have started happening. It's almost like we've seen this movie before. Yeah. That's the concerning part, I think, for a lot of people. And it's always that little, like, small step. I mean, I, I we, 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 we've, we've actually talked about this for, like, the last week. It's been a while. We were going to release this last week, 
but we decided to give it a little bit more time, talk about it a little bit more. And one of the things that I kind of brought up was, is that this is very much, I think the concern of a lot of people is very much like the old story of the Dutch boy or Dutch girl in the dam. And it's, uh, the story is, is that the way I always heard it anyways, it was a Dutch girl. She's walking home from the, the market and she passes the dam and there's this little hole in the dam that's spewing forth water. And so she sticks her finger in it to stop it. And she calls for help and nobody answers. And she stays there all night. She gets really cold, and but she doesn't remove her finger until the morning when her father, who actually works on the dam, along with her mother, are looking for her. They find her and they see what she's done. And it literally saved the town because if they if she hadn't put her finger in there, the whole dam would have cracked and broken open. Even that small finger hole of water leaking through would have destroyed the whole town. I think that's what people's concerns are with this. This is that one little hole that's eventually going to crack. It's been seen over and over and over again recently. Right. With a lot of other franchises that used to be favorites for a lot of people, and now it's not anymore. Because it's it's broken down into this this thing. And by the way, for those of you anyways that are listening that that do believe that woke culture is is the way to go, you don't need to take the stuff that we already have in this lore. It's already in the lore of Warhammer 40k. It's it's the 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 Prince of Pleasure, Slanesh. It's all literally in there. Who, oh, by the way? <laughs> Which is way before woke, by the way. What you're gonna say? <laughs> the Princess Slanesh takes the form of both male and female. Along with a lot of the demons and demonettes and and the whole concept of it anyways is very woke. So if, if you're really looking for that in Warhammer 40k, you already have it. And now your argument might be, it's like, well, well, Zekthar, those are the bad guys. <laughs> Which my response would be, who's not the bad guys in Warhammer 40k? That's That's the whole thing about Warhammer 40k. There are no good guys. I mean, you can find like one or two. I mean, probably the closest is what? Salamanders, right? Right. And then you've got a few characters here or there. I mean, Warhammer 40K is complete darkness in a forest with the occasional glimmers of light seeping through the trees. And even those glimmers, anyways, disappear rather quickly. I mean, Rabute Gilman is supposed to be this great hero of the Imperium right now. He's really not that great of a guy. <laughs> He's got a lot of problems. <laughs> so to me, anyways, if, if that's what you're looking for, it's already in, in the system. It's already in the lore. By all means, go look for it. It's it, it and it's and it's very long. And Yuxin and I haven't really talked about it much. We did do a brief vox on <laughs> the uh chaos gods, and we did talk about Slanesh, but we just haven't gotten there yet, quite frankly. Now in the upcoming Personally, months, when it comes to us and the chaos gods, we don't care much for them. Um, right. And the ones that we personally prefer, I guess you could put it, out of them for um, Zekthar, it is corn. Blood for the blood god. Skull for, for myself, for it is Zinch because he is the, the enigma contradiction. He is truly the chaos god. Yes. <laughs> All he seeks is he chaos. gains power from change, right? <laughs> so, uh, in conclusion, do you got anything, Yuxin? I just hope that this is where it stops and concerning the direction that it may be going, right? I hope we're wrong on that, but of course, this looks so much like things that have happened in the past, right. I, I agree with you there. I also think, anyways, that it's kind of ironic that if this take if this had taken place ten years ago, or even when they came out with the first codex for the Astartes, no one would have cared. It's just the world we live in now. It's like you said, Houston. We've seen this before. I mean, we've seen it with Star Wars and and Tolkien and even Star Trek has gone this way. And, I mean, you look at all these different, you Doctor know. Doctor Who. 
Do- Doctor Who, who I personally was never really a big fan of, but I heard a lot of people had a problem with it. But it's just we've seen this pattern so many times. And the one thing, anyways, that we could always hang our hat on was Warhammer 40K is always going to be a grim, miserable place where there is only war. And, and a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, and a lot of cool military stuff. It's really military stuff. I mean, with the tactics. And I mean, it's, it's, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. So, which is why it was more predominantly male. <laughs> well, folks, that'd be it for this box. If you like our stuff, please follow, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really like our stuff, feel free to join our membership program on our YouTube channel, Tales of Ashraka. Yes, but before we go, I wish to add, if you do wish to leave a comment, let's remember to keep it respectful and cordial with each other. <laughs> well, you're right. No need to bring anybody's mother into the comments. But in all seriousness, we'd enjoy liking to hear your comments. Uh, please leave them in the comments below. We, we honestly want to hear what you guys think. Indeed. Have a great day. Until next time. This is Ekthar. And Yudsen. Signing off. Thank <laughs> you.